Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from Outer space. space. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Just a quick shout out to the T5 peeps Bob the Dragon, Cat Crab Lobster, Data Magnet, Dark Machine, Bezik, Try Again 95, Feudic Yol, Astrea the Dreamer, Caspar Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Athelia, Meridian 117, and Jordan Buxmorm. Thank you very much. Story number one Our Greatest Export, written by Chapathic. Looking back on the whole affair, there was only one way that this was going to end. But at the time, we were so excited and terrified, we didn't see the writing on the wall. But hindsight is twenty twenty for a reason. The Gothorians were the first to make Banifall. Three of their smaller ships with more firepower than anything we'd ever devised landed in a black forest in Germany and stayed dormant for a few days. When they finally did open the hatch and greet us, they were doing so in front of every new station in the world, and with most of the German armed forces mobilized along with the rest of the world's nuclear powers, with the fingers on the big red buttons, as it were. They had no reason to save our stupid asses. In the long run, it was probably their worst decision to save us. They'd been at peace for 400 years. And, as a collective civilization, we'd managed 260 out of 4,000 years of history. But they were better than us. They dragged our asses out of the fire and gave us the tools to heal our broken planet. And in return, we threatened their peace. For as much aid as the Gathorians were throwing at us, there were some things that weren't handouts. Part of the deal we signed with the Gothorians was that we'd disarm our current stockpiles and would have to bend backwards to get any type of tech that could be weaponized. What they hoped would happen is we'd become more peaceful and organized society. What it did instead was create the greatest arms rush since the Soviet Union got a taste of the West. To understand why a bunch of corrupt alien governments, terror groups, and crime syndicates were trading with us instead of making their own gear I have to explain a few things about the Federation that we'd been duped into joining. First was that though even though they had laser weapons that blew our gear out of the water, they were pretty much the easiest things to regulate. The galaxy may be a big place, but Federation bureaucracy was bigger. Every machining tool was regulated, every fuel cell and battery was tracked, and anyone with a skill or know-how was carefully monitored. In short, our guns may have been about as useful as Napoleon-era musket in Fallujah, but they weren't tracked, and we had a lot of them. Most criminal groups made their own slug guns, as they called them, which meant no standardization between groups and limited industry to avoid detection. Well, Earth didn't have that problem, and since the bureaucracy didn't have the strong grip on Earth, we managed a mutually beneficial relationship. They delivered equipment the Gathorians would prefer we didn't have, and in return we gave them the guns, tanks, and aircraft that we had to get rid of anyways. The big selling point about our guns was all. With a laser rifle, you end up with a smoking corpse and maybe a detached limb if you really try. But with a slug thrower, you have blood, you have chunks of body parts flying, and you have destruction. Militaries didn't care about it, but gangs loved it, especially when we started building multi-purpose high-explosive rounds in most cannabis. Crime shut up pretty predictably. All those criminal groups that only use guns on special occasions could use them whenever they needed and not have to worry about ammo or parts since we'd sell them more. It didn't take long for them to modify their guns to get up to par with a laser rifle. What they lacked in accuracy, weight, recall, and armor penetration they made up for in kinetic damage. Most police and Federation forces used laser-resistant armor, which did jack against a bullet. And when they did send out armored troops, all our customers had to do was load our high-density penetrator rounds, and they were fine. Once we had the know-how and the tech, we started modifying them ourselves, if you thought alien criminals were bad with our guns, just didn't wait until you saw a bunch of humans could do with our upgraded guns. And it wasn't limited to equipment either. Dictators who stayed in power were renting their armies by brigade to the highest bidder. Everything from tank crews to child soldiers were being sent all over the galaxy. Some never came back home either, 
because they died, I'll find a way out. Of course, the Gothorians figured out pretty quickly what was going on, but by the time they did, it was far too late for them to really do anything. Unlike a laser rifle, which can be shut down remotely, a gun pretty much works until you melt it, or crush it, or bury it in cement. And even then, a skilled gunsmith can make it work again. They made us melt the rest of our stock, but even then enough equipment slipped through the cracks, both on purpose and by accident. Because even with gangs and criminals using our guns, there was one special client who also bought them. The Federation. Because as much as they touted peace and prosperity, they knew that it was a nasty galaxy, and sometimes an olive branch is more useful if you sharpen it first. So while they cracked down on the small-time runners, the guys who sold a crate or two of Colt 45s to some aliens looking to cause some havoc, the guys like me just traded one good customer for another. A slugger became a catch-all phrase for most of our guns, and since criminals used them first, if the Federation needed to operate without drawing attention to themselves, they just gave up some suspiciously well-trained mercenaries, some unregulated, unmonitored guns, and there wasn't any evidence as far as the system was concerned. Just an unfortunate event brought on by the evil humans and their guns. Eventually, when the stockpile started running low and the private collectors refused to sell, we had to start making them again. A lot of the presses and machining tools were lost, but the talent and demand was still there. Because, as great as Earth is, and believe me, I live there, we don't have a lot that the aliens don't, and they sure as hell weren't lining up to buy our cars. End of story. Story number two. When the alphabet is not enough. Written by Ice Cream and Wine. You failed, human. You failed utterly, said the cabrosa to the armored figure pinned to the wall by a thin metal rod. I killed twenty-six of you, rasped the figure. Not bad going at all. Cabrosa's leadership is a hive, mind you fool. You would have to kill all twenty-seven of us. And, as you can see, I am still alive. Your armored suit is completely out of power. All the readings are negative, and you are literally harmless. Lucky shot, growled the figure. Indeed, I have noticed the weak spot in your armor, and will pass it on to our soldiers, so not only did you fail to kill us, you probably have given us the means to defeat you in the near future. He stamped closer to the wall and rested his sword over the heart of the figure. I shall take my time getting you. The blade will enter your heart very slowly, and there is nothing you can do to prevent it. Home is where the heart is, croaked the armored figure. What? What do you mean by that? said the Cabrosian. You don't think we bring our hearts, our most delicate and vital organs, into battle with us, do you? And for something that has fought a twelve-year war against us, you don't seem to know jack about humans. Uh, uh, that's just nonsense, gabbled the Gabrosian. You humans cannot survive without your hearts. You would die, says you. The Gabrosian gaped at him and then looked at the sensor array strapped to his left tentacle. The armored figure leaned two inches to his left, and then his left hand grabbed at the figure's right tentacle that was holding the sword, and pulled the blade through the armor and into his body. What are you doing? croaked the Cabrassian. You are right in your assumption that my armor is unpowered. But you forget that compared to you, weedy bastards, we are as strong and as hardy as Vac. The right armor glove closed over the head of the Cabrassian. It was a scorching noise, and then silence. The silence was broken by the sound of a rapidly cooling biomass hitting the floor. The silence returned, only to be broken by the sound of a labored breathing. Tuko would be so disappointed in you, whispered the voice. Silence reigned, and was broken by three cubed. <laughs> the sound of metal hitting the floor faded away, to be replaced by... Nothing. End of story.
And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed. There are links down below both to support this channel and for the author of this fiction. Anyways, I hope you all have a fantastic one, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.